If you are following these videos in order, you should be up to speed on the various edit point types and how they affect the envelope. In this video, we're going to talk a bit more on how to use the editor to affect the timing. As you can see, the background of the editor has a graph. Along the X and Y axis of this graph are 1 8 units. This guide will make it easy to understand just what is happening when editing time, which surprisingly can become quite complicated. To demonstrate, I'm going to enter a point on beat 2 and set its type to hold. The drastic change to the envelope will help get a better visual representation of how this all works, but remember, the same principles will follow with all envelope types. Next, I want to take beat 2 and drop it back one quarter note. So looking at the x-axis of the graph, where the edit point is located, it is beat 2. To drop it one quarter note, I simply need to pull down the edit point. While I do so, I will watch the y-axis of the graph. When the edit point reaches minus 1, then I know I have pulled the beat back one quarter note. In my example, I'm using an extremely basic kick snare beat, with a kick on beats 1 and 3, and the snare on 2 and 4. Again, this is very, very basic, but it will help you understand how this all comes together. So now I know that once gross beat hits the edit point on beat 2, it will return to beat 1. If beat 1 is a kick, then gross beat should make this pattern go from a kick on beat 1 and snare on beat 2, to a kick on beat 1 and a kick on beat 2. Now as I have mentioned in an earlier video, it can be a good idea to use snapping to ensure that the edit points land on the correct time. For example, if my edit point does not land right on beat 2, then I end up with a clipped kick sample because the beat is not returning to the exact spot when the kick is played. So to ensure I don't have this, I will use the snap option. Now this is a basic demo, but should be enough to get the idea. So now on beat 3, I have snare and a kick again on beat 4. If I wanted to say have a snare on beat 3, as I do, but have another on beat 4, there are a few ways I could do this. I could create an edit point on beat 4 and bring it back one beat to beat 3. This would make beat 3 play again instead of beat 4, which is a snare. Another way is to take beat 4 and move it up one beat. This would move beat 4 to beat 1 of the next bar or loop, which is now a snare. Thus, we would get two snares. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is beat 1 a snare? It should be a kick. That is because on beat 2, we pulled everything back one beat. So that would make beat 1 on the next bar, or loop, a snare. So in this next example, I'm going to take the snare on beat 3 and have another one play in quick succession after it. So I'll insert an edit point just after beat 3, and I'm going to move it down two steps on the graph. Now what you hear is another snare on beat 3 and another snare right behind it. But what you may also hear is the timing seems a little messed up once it loops into the second bar. So what I'll do is insert another edit point and move it to bring it back up one beat, the same amount I had dropped it just before beat 4. This will correct the timing so that it is consistent when it loops. Now these examples are simplified time edits. By using a combination of edit points and edit point types, you can create a wide range of customized time variations for your audio. In the next video, we'll look at working with the step editor and the two slot performance parameters 
key held, and one shot. 